Pum 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 pum. Alrighty, guys. What is going on? Do 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 do. Let's see here. All right. As you can see, we got some mail here. We're going to get to that here in a second, though. I'm trying to post this online so people know. I, I don't know. Uh, well, anyways, if they come, they come. If they don't, who cares? So as you can see, we got a big old box here. Huge, huge box. Let me move this over so I can see it. Yeah, there we go. Because this box is so big. I got some stuff in here. It came for me. Hey, Viper Dave, how you doing, buddy? Got some, got a new package here. We're going to be opening it up and checking out what we got inside. Let me see what we got inside. Mm-mm-mm. All righty. See what we got here. Viper Dave. Let's see if Viper Dave likes what I got here. Let's see if Viper Dave likes what I got. All righty. Let's move that out of the way so I don't cut my hands, my fingers. Ugh, we're going to slide this big box over here. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, got some, we got some, got some packing, packing paper. That's always important, right? Got some packing paper. Alrighty. Boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, look at this. Got all kinds of good stuff in here. There's a lot of good stuff. Look at that. Oh, all right, so let's let's, uh, let's take it out. See what we got here. Uh, let's take it all out and see what we got here. Oh. Everyone got discombobulated big time there. Oh boy. All right. So it looks like everything in the box, besides the packing stuff, put that away. Put that away. All right. Whew. All right. So we can concentrate on what we got here. Wow. Nice. Excellent. All right. I know what I got, but it's going to take you guys a few minutes to figure it out. Dun, 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 dun. Uh. Mm. Oh, shoot. I left my glasses over at the table. Damn it. Oh, crap. All right. We'll get, we'll get to that here in a minute. What do I see? I see a bunch of counters here. Tons and tons and tons of counters here. Oops. Look at that, huh? Tons and tons of counters. For war games. So let's see what war game it is. So <laughs> see we got a bunch of stuff here. Let's open it all up and see what all these counters go to. All right, let's start with uh, let's start with this one over here. It's got a Ziploc. It's got a bunch of maps here. All right. 
So we got uh, got some maps here. Map number eight, map number seven, map number six, map number five, map number four, three, two, and number one. So map number one through eight here. Desert terrain. Some roads, some villages, some some rough areas. Here's one. Uh, Hey Arnold, how you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Good to stop. Thanks for stopping out. Just opening my, my new box here. Big town. Again, you can. Uh, these more maps are meant to, you know, put them together like that or whatever, whatever the scenario calls for. Cool. And then we also have Africa cores, right? Got these huge maps. Look at how big these things are. Holy cow. This is one of them. Africa Corps. Africa Corps. Alright. There's one map. Oh, here's another one. Look at this. So, ugh, quite a big map here. A huge map, actually. Plenty of space to put on your table and play, right? Africa core. Nice. Excellent. All right, so two of those, three maps there. Hey, Al, Red Sox fan, how you doing? I got a uh, another map here. This is for Guadalcanal. Guadalcanal. That's map number one there. We just showed you the Africa Core maps. And this is going to be a, some more for Guadalcanal. Huge maps. You can see a plenty, plenty big. Right. So there's all the maps there. Then we got the uh, Africa Core Scenario Book. Africa Core Scenario Book. It's got a terrain effects chart on the back, and then all your different scenarios. It looks like there's uh, 49, 50 scenarios in the book. Hey Al, how you doing? Hey um, Arnold, how you guys doing? So lots of scenarios to play, Africa Core. And there is a book called Fonte Russo. This is going to be uh, Italian on the desert front, I believe is what these scenarios are. Scenario book, lots of different scenarios. Uh, I did come with an extra counter sheet that's probably in these Planto boxes over here. We'll look at those here in a minute. This comes with uh, how many scenarios are in this one? Holy cow. Mm -hmm. Big scenarios, little scenarios, all kinds of different scenarios there. Some of them use three, four maps. Some use six maps. Some use eight maps, three maps. So a bunch of different scenarios there. Cool. All right. Stacking up all my goodies over there. So this is for, uh, if you guys don't know this yet, this is for the Panzer Grenadier System by Avalanche Press. It's a tactical platoon size level um Board game, war game, whatever you want to call it. Pretty, pretty decent system, um, and definitely, uh, you know, something you can sit down and play. You can learn it in just five minutes, according to this sheet. But to be really good at it, you know, it takes some uh, 
What's the best war game to purchase for beginners? Um, whoosh, uh, that really depends on what you're looking to do, to be honest. Here's the third edition. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't take the headphones off. Um, depends what you're looking to do. Uh, if you're looking for tactical, if you're looking for strategy games, um, you know, if you like moving counters around that have hundreds and hundreds of men, or if you want to move a counter around that represents like one or two guys, there's a big difference. So wargaming, I mean, you know, do you want to have a whole bunch of counters? Do you want it to be abstract? Do you want it to be more realistic? There's all kinds of different, uh, uh, bless you, <laughs> thank you. And I actually have to look over my uh, thing here. Oh, you know what? That's kind of dumb. I could just drag this over to the screen right in front of me. There we go. Uh, so third edition rules for Panzer Grenadier. Uh, and then here is some more third editions because I have several different boxed editions. Here are their different, it's only like two charts, two pages of charts. You have your direct fire table, like that. And then you have your bombardment table. This is, uh, this is obviously for like, uh, uh, off board artillery or any kind of um, artillery. You got your train effects, how things, you know, how much movement costs, your assault, coast combat, your turn record chart, uh, some more of those. Uh, what do we have here? The summary sheets. Right. Summary sheets. Platoon level combat in World War II. Platoon level combat in World War II. Panzer Grenadier. Avalanche Press. Pretty, uh, you know, like I said, the rule book is only, uh, it's only like 16, 17 pages. A couple pages worth of, uh, you know, talk about what the numbers on the counters represent. Pretty simple, though. And some more tables, some more charts, more tables, more charts, more tables and charts. That's because each game comes with their own terrain and bombardment chart and everything. And since I bought this as a huge package, uh, so what else do we have here? We still got another package of stuff yet. Let's see what's in this package. War on the Equator. So this is going to be... Uh, well, this is interesting. So here's like a, here's a, like a photocopy of the photocopy of the counters there. See if I can zoom in a little bit for you guys there. See if it'll focus. That would be really cool. Oh, and I got it upside down. It doesn't help. So there's your different uh, counters. What they look like. Just a little supplement thing there. That's pretty good. Your scenarios for uh, Guadalcanal there. Your vent tables. There is, uh, what, 24 scenarios here. Ranging in all kinds of different sizes and shapes. And how many counters you want to play with. How many turns. That's pretty cool, like that. Then we have Tank Battles, another scenario book. Tank Battles, another scenario book. Here's another look at the, some like what the counters look like on there. See, you can see the uh, firepower and the range there. Firepower is six, range of two for those infantry units. Whole bunch more scenarios, tons and tons. Uh, I think this even has like a campaign type structure where you play through several um, scenarios in a row in a row to get results. Uh, plus, there's some detailed explanations on the history of the battles and the Austrian army of 1938. War plan, the different equipment, 
then of course you know your different scenarios there so that's cool so that's another uh, thing we got there and then of course we got the big boy here this is called East Front so this is the scenario book that comes with the main game so this is a uh, you know, if you wanted to get started in Panzer Grenadier, you can use any of them, but this is obviously the big one on the east front, and it has a ton of scenarios in here. There is, uh, what is there, 112 scenarios in this book here. So, <laughs> plenty, plenty of scenarios to choose from. Cool. So, quite a few scenario books and charts it looks like a lot but this is um i ended up <clears throat> buying this pack on ebay and it had six six how do i do six six had six games in it so i got the six games some of them were just uh you know like scenario books like this one uh the war on the equator was like a scenario book there um but it comes with East Front. There's books there. This book here, another supplement book. Then the Africa Corps. And your East Front. And Guadalcanal. Or like your three big, big board game type games. And then these other ones are supplements that add scenarios to it and such. And uh, as we saw earlier, there's four huge maps for Africa Corps. And then there's, for East Front, there's eight scenario books, or uh, maps, eight scenario maps for that. All right, now let's look at uh, some of the counters here. Let's see how he's got them separated before he shipped them to me. So these are all your... These are going to be like your miscellaneous counters, right? This is going to be, uh, you know, after your unit. Oh, look, he even has dice in here for me. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. It's like an orange one with, with blue coloring on it. Uh, but, like, here's your move marker, or fire marker, disrupted marker, when he needs to become disrupted. Entrenchments, markers, all your different entrenchment markers. You know, basically all your miscellaneous counters that you need to play the game. Bunch of dice in here. Plenty. Plenty, you'll never need that many. They give you plenty in each game. But <laughs> you, never, you never use half of them anyways. Alright, let's see what's in the... Uh, let's see what's in the, the main... Let's not have that fall. And these these nice little Play-Doh boxes, you know, these things aren't cheap. You go to Walmart or something and buy these things. They're like five, six bucks a piece. Two, three. I got four of them in my box, plus all the games and everything. So pretty happy about that. And I got to get my glasses now. Hang on. So here's, uh, let's see here, it looks like British units here. Here's a uh, heavy machine gun. Let's see if we can get this camera to focus in on it here. Hello. Oh, Mr. Camera. Hello. There we go. Uh, it's almost focused. Oh, come on. There we go. Come on. Anyways, it's pretty nice counters. So we have, uh, looks like these are the Italians. These are going to be the Italians. The darker brown or whatever color, the darker tan are the Italian units, I believe. You can tell by their nationality symbol on them. Come on.
Yeah, you know, of course it's not gonna. Looks like he has them separated by groups, which is really good. And then there is German units here. So this must be uh, this. Uh, all this must be the um, Africa Corps game. There we go. Oh, perfect. So you can see really nice counters. So that number in the middle is their morale. And the number on the left is their... Mm, one of them is their leadership and the other one is their, uh, their bonus they give. So I'll have to make sure I put these back in the right box there. So this is going to be Africa Corps here. Italians. And Germans and British units. Oh, that, yeah, that's going to be Africa. All kinds of, you know, there's tank units here. Let's see. Here's, uh, let's see if we can get you a couple. Here's a Crusader. Let's see if we can get this to zoom in on the Crusader here without... Come on. Come on, you can do it. And I you just started to focus and then you Come on. This this camera, I need to get a different camera cuz I really starting to not like this one at all. There we go. There's a crusader. The British there. All right, now where did I get? That? I got that from there. Cool. All right, so that's the Africa Corps one. That's nice. This I bet you is going to be. This is going to be the German and Romanian units. So this is going to be East Front here. This is going to be East Front. This is German and Romanian. And I bet you this is going to be... Let's see over here what this is. This is going to be... This is going to be... I bet you this... Are these Russians here? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. Americans. Oh, this is, uh, this is going to be... This is going to be, uh, this is going to be Guadalcanal here. So where are the Russian units in from East Front? I don't think they're in here. Uh, yeah, these are, hang on a minute, these are, yeah, these are the Soviets. Yeah, 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 okay. It's got the star, right? The Soviet star. There we go. Firepower 6, range of 1, submachine gun units, right, so this is going to be Soviet and, I think it's Romania, is it not Romania, who's the, who is the little red Red uh, symbol there on the. Is that, I think that's got to be Romania. So this is going to be Soviet and Romanian units. Tons and tons of counters. Plenty, plenty. And then this is going to be the German. Uh, these are the. Uh, the uh, key, uh, what is it, Aust Austrian, uh, um, Australian units with the Kiwis there and the kangaroo. Three inch mortars there. These must, yeah, these must be the... These are the Germans up there. I'll have to sort them out and figure out who's who's what. But of course, it does a good job in the scenario book of 
kind of laying things out. So it'll it'll show you like uh, they got elements in the 158th Infantry Regiment, 63rd uh, Serrani Division. You can see this is a pretty light one. It's only got uh, three infantry, one mortar, and a heavy machine gun. I think this is like an intro scenario. And you're going up against the D Company 26 Battalion, 6 Australian Division. So that's how the kind of the scenarios are set up. Oh, let's see. I haven't checked. Uh... All right. Scenario rules and information, blah, blah, blah. Tank battle at Michetali. Beta Forma 1. Forte Palastarino. Tanks on the run. See here, 14 infantry, you know, heavy machine gun, two 25 pounders, a 77 millimeter, three heavy machine guns, a two pound mortar, or a two pound, I think that's anti uh, tank. 47 millimeter and three trucks plus a bunch of leaders blah 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 so you can see some of these scenarios are a little bit bigger there's only a one map scenario I'll set one of these up one of these days and uh, show you guys some some activity here plenty of plenty of scenarios that's for sure Plenty of scenarios. So, tactical World War II combat. Tactical World War II combat. Infantry. Alright. So, it's nice already punched out. Because, God, there's nothing worse than getting a new war game. And having to... Cut out all those stupid counters. Oh, I hate that. It drives me insane. It takes forever. It takes forever. Have to... Plenty of units, so... I'll have to set up a scenario one of these days. Soviets all over the place. I think the yellows are Romanian. I could swear the yellows are Romanian. Am I wrong? I can't be wrong. Can I be wrong? I'm not normally wrong. Let's see. Let's go to the East Front book. Uh, I was looking to see... Soviet, German, this is going to be the Romanian, yep, so that is Romanian, haha, <laughs> see I was right, so the yellows are going to be Romanian, these uh, like greenish ones, that's, uh, that's German up there, that's a German infantry, See if we can look at a German infantry unit here. There's a German infantry unit. Five firepower, three range. All right. I was thinking maybe yeah. So these are all these are Soviets here. These are the Soviets, these are the Germans, and there's some rest of the Romanian, and there's some miscellaneous units up here. 
it's not you know really complex game as you can tell uh, there's not a lot of uh, it's more of a zoomed out view because you can see here like here's a, here's one down right so like each hex is like 500 meters so you're gonna have you know some units are gonna be If you had your units here, right? And we got a range of two hexes, right? So one, two. So it's going to be more close in fighting here. Germans here, they got a 5 3. So they can outshoot the uh, r uh, Russians. So it is kind of a more zoomed out than like if you're looking for like a, a tactical scenario. This is more like platoon level stuff. But they do a good job on it. I really like it. It's uh, like I said, it's pretty simple. Pretty um, There's not a lot you can see here by these maps. You know, there's not a lot of not a lot of terrain to worry about. It's not like ASL. <laughs> You know, you're just moving. You don't have to worry. Once in a while, you'll have to road hexes or forest hexes or for farmlands, but, you know, not very often. Here's a little hill here. Big town. And, of course, you know, you can always, based on the scenario, you can put them that way. You can flip this around and put it this way. You can put them back to back down this way you can do it like this however however this scenario calls for it so there you go a pretty pretty decent all in all uh, if you look at east front if you go to the avalanche press site which I will go to right now um, And we look under Panzer Grenadier, and we look at East Front. East Front, where are you, East Front? Uh, am I in the wrong section? No, I'm in the right section. Where is East Front? They might not sell this anymore because it's one of their older games. I don't actually see East Front on here. And I don't see um, Africa War either. So they've kind of, through the years, they've the system has evolved... The games have become a little more complex. These are like earlier additions to their games, but still, if we look at say, uh, we'll look at something comparable, Kursk, I guess. If we look at Kursk, Kursk is seventy nine ninety nine. Seventy nine ninety nine. It comes with. Uh, let's see. Does it say what it comes with? How many counters and stuff? 517 uh, playing pieces and 40 scenarios. 517 pieces and 40 scenarios. So, you know, just to give you an idea. So I got East Front. They're like big, big box edition of the East Front for this system. I got Africa Core, which is their big box edition uh, in Africa, obviously. I got, uh, let's see here, I got three supplements to go with it, which is, if I get them all out here, Fronte Russo, War on the Equator, Tank Battles, plus I got all the counters in the Play-Doh boxes. How much do you think I, get, I bought this, got this for on eBay? How much do you think? 
Let's see who can guess the closest amount. Let's see who can guess the closest amount. You know, just to get, you know, just one of these boxes. If you buy it new, you know, it's you're talking $30, $40 for just like a small edition. If you're looking for like a, the big box editions, they're going to cost you $50 or $60 brand new. Oh, and I got Guadalcanal too. Right, I forgot about that. I, so I got the tank panels. Just like I said, this is just a supplement box. This is Warren the Equator, a supplement. This is another scenario book. I got um, Guadalcanal. I got East Front. And I got Africa Corps. So, I mean, to be honest, I had purchased all these a while back. And I had these before I moved to Florida. I had a bunch of this stuff, and I sold it all before I moved. So I know if I was to buy this stuff, uh, you're looking at probably 69 at 70 30 180 each of these supplement books are 20 bucks a piece so that'd be 200 210 220 230 uh, probably about 240 to 250 dollars not counting shipping or anything brand new if you were to get all this stuff brand new oh viper day says a hundred dollars al red sox fan says 45 and ronster says 200 and I got the Apoido boxes as well with the uh, with the bid. Viper Dace is, wait, 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 150. Viper Dace is 150. So, yeah, you're, you're looking at like $240, not counting shipping if you're going to order this straight from the company. Pro probably pretty close to that, somewhere around there. I mean, they, Avalanche Press does have a lot of good sales. A lot of times they'll have like you know, 20% off, or they might even have, like, uh, you know, uh, I even got things from them that are, like, buy one, get one at equal cost of, or less. I don't know if they still do that or whatever. Um, so, let's see here. Uh, so Viper D says 150. I mean, I would have. I uh, I actually had a high bid of like 66 dollars on this, uh, but I ended up getting this because no one else outbid me for 28 dollars, which is a super super steal. I I have been looking on eBay for different things, and I'll tell you what, people on eBay. Ebay isn't what today what it was ten years ago. I'll tell you that right now. People think their stuff is worth a lot more than it really is. I cannot believe the difference. When I used to sell th stuff on eBay, I would just sell low to try and you know get them to bid against one another until they got really high. Uh, but I got all this for uh, twenty eight dollars, twenty eight dollars, and then there was shipping on top. So shipping was like. I think it was uh, like 16 bucks or something. So Al was really close. Al was really close. Um, yeah, I, I was I was amazed. Somebody tried to outbid me. I think the starting bid was like 26 dollars. Somebody tried to outbid me and it went up to 28. I put my max bid at like 60 bucks because I'm like, for 60 bucks, this is a really good deal. So, uh, really good. I mean, just just these little boxes, right? If you go to the like Walmart, they're like five or six bucks a piece. I got four of them, right? Four of these are like 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks for these things. I, I, I know they're, they're not cheap, right? So, if you buy something and you have to go to Walmart and buy these little containers to put them in, it's going to cost you another $20 on top of that. So, yeah, I couldn't believe that I got it for as cheap as I did. 
and you know, I mean, you can see, hopefully, well, let's see, I don't know if you can see, because I got my camera, and you can see there is, there's probably uh, 500 counters or more in this box here, 500 counters or more, right? We just look at if I just take these out, right? How many's in here? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, two, four, six, eight. 30, there's like 32 counters right there, and just one, one little hand. So 30, uh, I would say maybe 45, 55, 65, 75, 80, 90, 100, 120, 150, 180. 90, 200, 210, 220, 230, 240, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 310, 340, 350, 60, 70, 80, 90, 400, yeah, 450. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm doing ballparking. <laughs> I think it's a, I thought it was a really good deal. I was like, wow. So, I'm happy. Definitely, definitely happy um, to get this for what I got. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a pretty good, interesting system. It's like I said, it's not very complex. If you're not, uh, not a lot of people are familiar with it. Um, but the the counters are nice. Uh, they do a really good job of uh, providing you scenarios. There's tons and tons of scenarios and. In each of the boxes plus you can buy the supplement books so I mean the cool thing is there's like 20 different um, scenario uh, different games in the same system so once you learn the system you can play you know all kinds of different battles East Front West Front Desert Pacific and you know they do, they do have the 4th edition rules on their website. You can actually go to their website, which is avalanchepress.com. And if you click on their Panzer Grenadier, um, there's actually a link that will take you to the rules. And you can download the charts and the counters for free. You can print it out yourself and have a... Uh, you, have, you know, check out the system for yourself. It's basically, you can download everything for free just to try it out. They give you, like, um, yeah, the, the they call it the Panzer Grenadier playset. A couple pages of charts. Um, you can get the uh, scenario cards. Oh, there is a Vassal module, which I couldn't find when I was actually looking for that. Um, so I can actually show you guys maybe a little bit better online the vessel with the vessel module. So that's cool. And like I said, these are uh, they've really done a better job on their maps. They made them more three dimensional, better quality, better better texture and stuff. These are like their third edition games. They now have the fourth edition out, which kind of clarifies a few of the rules and stuff like that nothing too major I mean it's still the same basic game um, yeah let's see I don't know do I have the let me see if I've got the vessel module here uh, I think I downloaded something the other day what was that hmm that's not it I could have sworn I downloaded it, because then I can actually show you guys maybe a little bit better. Um, but the, I think, I think uh, who was it that asked earlier? Arnold, was it Arnold about what's the best war game to purchase for beginners? 
If you're looking for tactical board gaming, or are you looking for, you know, like monster board gaming with lots and lots of counters on it, do you want, uh, you know, just a few counters on it? Uh, you know, if you're looking at, like, you know, are you real in close, like tactical, or zoom out a little bit and you're more platoon level, you zoom out a little bit more and you're looking at, like, bigger battles where each counter are, is, you know, a whole bunch of guys. This is more like a platoon type thing where I think each counter is, like, three to five tanks and each, 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 um counter of guys is like 20 to 50 guys in it uh, if you're looking for a tactical game I would highly recommend uh, lock and load they got a really nice game and their stuff is actually on sale right now as well it is expensive but they have really good quality and the really good gaming system and of course another one of these companies that you can download everything try it out for free so you can't go wrong there Aha! Wait a minute. Is this what I think it is? Let me see if this is what I think it is. Because if this is what I think it is... Let's see. Uh, I don't know if this is it, though. Let's see. I think it is. Oh, this is like a demo edition. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, yeah, so I will show you this, guys, because I think it's important to be honest. Uh, let me show you my desktop. There we go. All right. So... Let me zoom back over on the other side. I'll swing this over here. So you can see um, this is their new fourth edition demo game. Um, and you can tell the quality now is much, much nicer, better. You, I mean, if you look at the difference in the maps between that, right? And then we take that off and you look at this map, you can see the difference, right? They really spent a lot of time like improving their overall quality, the looks, the aesthetics, um, you know, everything about it. Uh, you know, and even the hill, right? You compare that to the hill that's on this other map, and you're like, wow. So definitely, the newer items are much better quality, much better um, looks, playability. Uh, and you know, here's some of the here's some of the counters here. Let's see. Uh, if we go to close game, new game. I want to sure. I'll try that. Uh, interesting. It doesn't load the actual. Okay, so you gotta you gotta play on this little uh, map here. Okay. That's one thing I was hoping Avalanche Press would do a little bit better is um, get more involved with Vassal. Um, this is a good way to, you know, play the game electronically, obviously, if you're not familiar with it. But so uh, we'll throw out a few different pieces here so you guys can see what they look like. Here's a, a Stug. Here's an engineer. Heavy machine guns. 
uh, you have infantry platoon. So yeah, each one of these is like a platoon. Let's throw out some uh, the Russian guys here. Let's do uh, infantry. Oops, hello. Oh, I can't because I write. That's dumb. Right, because I signed in as the German player. I won't let me do that. So now I gotta go in as solitaire. So now I can do both. Unfortunately, it only has one map in the demo version. Uh, let's see. Does it have the? It, you know, it's got the dice rolls and all that stuff. Fortunately, it does not have the... Here's your uh, game tracker. Oh, here they are, charts. So here's your fourth edition direct fire charts. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to add up the firepower of your units. And if they're all within range, you're going to move it back and forth. And then based on what you roll, it might be a morale check. It might be casualties, etc. There'll be modifiers, which will take it up and down columns. So if you get a plus one, it's going to take it to the next column. It doesn't give you a plus one to your dice roll. So M are like morale checks. M1 is like a morale check plus one, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's not, you know, it's not very complex. There's a few modifiers here and there. Here's your anti-tank firing, uh, your bombardment table, your assault table, and your train effects chart. That's pretty much it. Once you know the rules, that's all you need is a few charts. All right, um, let's see. Do we have the map? Did I delete the map? Did I? Uh, let's load up the map again. Uh, game map. Here we are. So we can show you guys a few more of the different units here. Some machine guns. Heavy, um, heavy machine gun, anti-tank rifles, mortar units, field guns. Wagons, off-board artillery. Here's your different leaders. Captains, lieutenants. And then uh, these modifiers here. It's interesting because if you uh, if you look at one of the pieces, like if we drag this guy out, and we flip him over... see... Other leader. There we go. So what happens whenever you draw a leader, you flip the counter, and whatever side it lands on is the counter you use. Uh, because each one of these will have different. Like this guy is a zero and a one. If we flip him over to the other leader, he's a one and a one. So sometimes you'll have better leaders that give you better modifiers, or sometimes you won't. So this guy is a 10-1-1. We flip him over. He's a 10 one zero. He's only an eight. That's his morale. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, you have a lot of, um, you know, different uh, outcomes with your leaders. And then uh, this, it will be a... Uh, let's see, if we take this guy here. Cycle of activation type, op fire, morale, psycho delete, psycho step. There we go. So he's like a half step unit now. Full and a half. There we go. I mean, there's, there's stacking, you know, how many th things you can put into a hex, right? Uh, how far they can move. You notice there's no morale on any of the units. That's all based upon the scenario. The scenario will give each side a certain morale. So if a morale check is needed, say your morale is eight, 
All right, then you need to roll two dice and roll eight or less. And if you don't, then you will become disrupted and then all kinds of bad things can happen. You got to try to rally your units. Very, you know, very common strategic level or um, tactical level stuff there. Uh, let's see here. So if we roll, roll the six, so he would pass his morale check. Leaders will help you with your morale check. Uh, if they give you the right bonus. Leaders can activate, like let's say, uh, let's put out some units here, right? And to do, to do, to do, do, and then we'll put this guy there, and we'll put this guy here. Uh, so like this leader here can activate during his turn, and um, he uh, let's actually flip him over to the other side. Other leader, there we go. So. He has, I believe, uh, I'm going to have to look at the rules, which side is which. <laughs> it's been a while since I actually played this game, but uh, it's just a matter of figuring out which side is which. And I need the rule book, which will tell me. It is... Uh, hmm... Leaners, uh, okay, combat modifier, morale modifier, and morale. So the number on the left is their, so for this lieutenant here, it's, is his combat modifier, helps in combat, and then this one over here is the morale modifier. So leaners can activate, though, and they'll activate themselves in any unit in adjacent hex, which then can activate another leaner, which would activate all the units around him as well. So we, this one unit can activate and activate all of these guys here. So in his hex and all of the surrounding hexes. And then this guy can activate off of him and activate all the units around him. So he can activate all of these guys here to move, fire, do whatever. So, you know, it's all in the rules. And there's a lot of good things to like about it. It's not a perfect system, um, but like I say, uh, I think you know a lot of people had uh, some issues with with uh, you know the quality and stuff. And you can see that this the maps and stuff are much nicer now. Not that that's super important to us war gamers, but still, it's nice to uh, see they're working on getting some better some better uh, quality stuff. I knew they had. Because the newer stuff that I ordered just before I moved from Florida was really nice. So we could maybe set up a little scenario and play out sometime. On Vassal, I didn't even know they had a Vassal mod until I went to their website. And uh, no, we don't need to save that. Thanks. So anyways, that's uh, for, for the price that I got it at. That was a steal and a half. I'm surprised the guy didn't even send it to me. Because after all this, like he made $24 or $28 minus whatever it cost him to post it on eBay. Like $25, really? You take your wife out to dinner, you're going to spend $25, bucks, right? He's going to have like one dinner and then all this stuff, right? For, that, for all this stuff. So good deal for me. Bad for him, I guess. Unfortunate for him. Nobody else is bidding on it. Uh, probably because of the... Uh, it's not... You know, Wargaming is a niche thing anyways. But, uh, you know, not a lot of people do a lot of Wargaming, especially with counters and maps and stuff like that. But if you can uh, look on eBay and get a good price... Get somebody that's selling a bunch of stuff for a pretty good price. But, man, I tell you, like I was saying earlier, I've been on eBay. I've been looking, and, and uh, it's just people, like, I look at the price of things, and I go to the website, to, and it's, like, cheaper on the website from these game companies. So why would I buy it from you and have you send it to me and charge me 15 bucks for shipping when I can go to the website and get it cheaper. It's crazy eBay is nowadays. It's, it's just like, 
It's crazy. I I got this this one, right? I, awesome deal. Six six games. It was twenty four dollars original, and then it went up to twenty eight when somebody was bidding against me. Um, and I'm thinking, wow, what a good deal. So uh, somebody else is selling a bunch of stuff, but he wanted a lot of money. And I said, I emailed him and I said, hey, once your, uh, once your auctions are done, if you want to sell everything to me, uh, you know, let me know. And he said, sure, I'll do that. And then he ended up emailing me after his auctions because nobody bought his stuff because he was, you know, w- way out pricing himself. And so he's like, oh, I'll sell you everything for 130 bucks. I just got this, six items, plus the, these, the Play-Doh boxes and everything for $28. He wanted five items, five items for $130. I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Good Lord. He's going to be posting that on eBay over and over and over again, and, and no, uh, nobody's going to buy it. I, I I don't know how people make their money on eBay anymore. It's crazy. I don't know. When I used to, like I said, like I, when I used to sell things on eBay, I'd be, I'd be selling them for a dollar, and then people would bid them up, and then they would bid against one another, and then I would get a pretty good price out of a lot of things. Some things didn't go for as much as I thought, but then there was other things that were like, wow, this was a lot more than I thought I was going to get for this thing. So, uh, it's not what it was. It's not what it is anymore. Anyways, that's it for me. Uh, you probably won't hear from me much after tonight because I'll be out of town for a while. So, I won't even get to play this. I'll probably take my little rules and read them on my trip. And uh, and then maybe when we get back, we can do something. And until then, I guess we'll see you all next time. So, thanks, Al and Ronster and Viper Dave, and of course Arnold. Thank you all for coming out, and everyone else that came out. I appreciate it, guys. That's it from our war center here. Panzer Grenadier, if you're looking for a war game, go check it out. Avalanche Press, avalanchepress.com. You can download the rules. You can read them over. You can download a, um, the counters and a scenario map and uh, a scenario play it out and see if it's something you might be interested in it is i will tell you uh it is a system that is um there is some really good things with the system but it is kind of um i don't want to call it finicky but it's one of those systems that it's going to take you a little while to figure things out like most tactical games you move next to your, you move your units and then you just shoot back and forth and then when one side starts breaking down then you send your guys in to go kill them. This game is not really like this. This is more of a game where you move your units up and then you bomb them with artillery or you know cause disruption and then you go in and do melee as opposed to doing a lot of shooting back and forth. So it is a little bit different. The system is is designed that way, and it takes a little bit of time for most players to wrap their head around the good things in this game. And it just, you know, so I would play it a couple times. I know the first couple times I played it, I was like, oh, this is, no, I don't like this at all. And then my buddy was playing it with me, and we learned a lot of stuff, and then then we started really liking it a lot better. There are people out there that really, really, really love this system. They talk about it. You can go on the forums. And uh, you can get tips and tricks and help or, you know, this, that, and the other thing to kind of learn. It's not very complex, but there are things you should learn, you know, like how how's the best way to assault units in a, in a, in a town, you know, what's the best way to do that? Because it doesn't seem like something you can do until you learn, okay, artillery is the king of World War II combat, the, t- the side with the more artillery is going to win nine times out of ten because the- those units do a lot more damage than the units that are shooting their little rifles. When you got big explosions, right? So if you look at what happened in, uh, if you look at what happened in um, Syria when they took down ISIS leader, right? What did they do? 
They bombed the hell out of it. And then they send in their little, their, uh, their Delta Force units to go in and wipe everything up. That's the way it was back in World War II as well. One side bombs the hell out of you, then you send in your ground units to go map everything up. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the way the real combat works. That's the way this is modeled, and it takes a little bit of time for people to wrap their heads around that and use that to their advantage. And so I will say that. Okay. So, anyways, um, it's a good, it's fun, it's interesting, and you get a uh, you get a ton of scenarios. Um, you know, I mean, 112 scenarios just in that one supplement. It would take you probably three years to play that, right? So you get a lot of you get a lot of quality, you get a lot of units, you get a lot of everything. So highly recommend you check it out at least. All right, there you go. That's my uh, that's my that's my two minutes online here, and I hope Al and Ronster and everyone has a great evening. Viper Dave, Arnold, y'all have a good one. We'll see y'all next time. So thanks for coming out. Talk to you later.